All right. I think we are live now. Looks like it. Hello, everybody. My name is Bayzad. My name is Teresa. That's it. You got it. You got it. And uh, we are from Naked and Famous Denim, and welcome to the weekly Naked and Famous Denim live stream, the raw, the Friday night raw, raw denim, denim live stream, stream right here on the internet, on YouTube. We're here to talk to you guys about all things raw denim related, Naked and Famous Denim related, off topic chats for sure, mm -hmm. definitely some rants, um, you know, answer your questions. We'll see where this live stream takes us. Anyways, it's a fun hangout with uh, the world of raw denim lovers out there. Uh, and speaking of the world of raw denim uh, lovers out there, we are streaming live from Yokohama, Japan. And you guys are tuning in from all over the world. We've got William Chire. Hello from Chicago. Pete McLeod. Hi, everyone from Toronto. The Catman, also from Chicago. Rice W5. Hello from Birmingham, UK. We've got John Davis checking in from Bend, Oregon. We've got uh, I Wallen. I Wallen? I hope I'm saying that right. Hello, howdy, from Portland, Oregon. We've got uh, Francisco Michael. Hello from Chicago. <laughs> Brainster. Chicago. Yeah, a lot of Chicago in the house tonight. Uh, Brainster, hi, from Seattle. Maxim Clothier from New Zealand. Welcome, welcome. Huh. 11 a.m. in New Zealand, apparently. Well, good nice. early afternoon. BD, hello from Parts Unknown also known as Welland, Ontario. <laughs> John Morales, Long Island, New York in the house. We've got uh, Slater Brown, hello from Georgia, USA. Sebastian Piljay, tuning in from St. Mary's, Georgia, USA. Melody Murray from Tucson, Arizona. Brain Mac, hello from Montreal. We've got Lucas Pisano from Tours, France. Max, hello from Denver, Colorado. Well, everybody, welcome to the live stream. If you're tuning in on the replay, you can let us know where you're tuning in from right there in the comments section below. Let's see. From how many different reaches of the earth? I thought my cat was eating our plant there for a second. No, oh, it's just the wind. Just eating. the wind. Just the wind. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, we want to know where you're tuning in from. Mm -hmm. Let's see how, how far reaching this live stream can get. And, you know, let's also start off the live stream by hitting that like button. We won't wait for uh, the hour mark is usually when we'll get there. But we will remind you in an hour or so. But... Let's start the live stream. Hit the like button. Let us know where you're from. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button as well. And let's see where this chat takes us. Um, all right. Venomous Teddy, hello, fellow Bayzad fans and the fellow Risa enthusiasts. All right. <laughs> Good more. Hey, Bayzad and Risa from the DMV. Uh -huh. uh, what's up, my pants peeps? What is up, everybody? So as far as what's going on with us, we're booked. For Canada, we're going. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be going back to Canada in a couple of, like, two weeks? Three weeks yeah. from now? As of yesterday, so this is the... Uh, yeah, so it's, it's the first travel of this year, of 2022. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be in Canada, we'll be in Montreal, then we'll mm -hmm. be in New York, then mm -hmm. we'll be back in Montreal for a bit, then we're going to be in Toronto, mm -hmm. then we're going to be in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go back to Japan. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a, a whirlwind trip. No Paris on this trip, unfortunately. Um, the Paris shows, uh, you know, for a lot of the reason why we're traveling is to go out to the trade shows. It's going to be our first, basically, round back again uh, mm -hmm. at the shows. First after two and a, two years? Two yeah, and a half years? two, two and a half years. We did technically do one show in Japan here, which... Uh, yeah, but it's yeah, not like it's not a the tour. Same. Yeah. Yeah, 799, what's in Las Vegas? Well, Las Vegas uh, holds a lot of trade shows, as, as you can imagine. Um, uh, Chris, Lauren, what Vegas shows are you in? We're going to be at a show called Project. So uh, I guess there's been a lot of shuffling around of trade shows mm -hmm. over the past two years. I mean, some have come, and well, nobody's come, but a lot of them have gone mm -hmm. so you know we used to do a couple of different shows that we were very kind of loyal to and uh those shows aren't in existence anymore it seems so we're finding our new grounding at different shows um uh, but we will be back in las vegas we will be at the project trade show where's that going to be is that in the venetian side of things i didn't even check yeah i don't even know um it depends yeah we're, we're used to being kind of on that venetian mirage side of the strip all the time um but uh yeah the other shows are usually down by uh 
Oh yeah. Luxor and the, uh, the end. The yeah, far... the other, the other far end. What, what do we got down there? Man. Oh, well, like a... just past Mandalay Bay and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know the strip pretty okay. I was gonna about to say pretty well, but now I realize I don't know it all that well. Oh, um, that link doesn't work. All right, so oh, we, right. We, we, we don't know yet, but uh, happy to be back in Vegas. Happy to be back in New York. In fact, I I remember Las Vegas being my first experience of like going to America as an adult. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you've never been to Las Vegas, it's a magical place. It's, yeah. I mean, it's very America. Like yeah. it can only exist in America, even though, you know, like a lot of cities have that kind of casino, like mm -hmm. whatever experience. Yeah. Nothing like Vegas. Yeah, nothing like Vegas. Nothing like the uh, the Las Vegas Strip. And I remember just thinking, wow, America literally has everything. And like that one strip is very, you know, uh, I suppose it's not misleading because literally everything you could possibly imagine is there. Like restaurants, yeah. shops, theme parks. theme parks, casinos, you know, glamour and everything that's not and glamorous. This, and yeah, yeah. despair. <laughs> yeah, just glamour and despair. It's, it's all there. Um, so anyways, it's uh, I'm happy to go back. It's been two years. We're going to enjoy our, uh, our time. Chris Lauren, favorite Las Vegas restaurant. So many good ones. Um, we go to Delmonico's a lot. That's our... In, in the it's Venetian. It's not like we go a lot. We yeah. just go yeah, consistently that's, yeah. every time we go. Yeah, that's been a tradition. Vegas. Yeah. The other tradition is the uh, the, the Grand, Grand Lux, Lux Cafe, Cafe. <laughs> also in the Venetian. Um, stack in Mirage is very good. It's the, also because we always stay Yeah, we also Mirage. stay at the Mirage. <laughs> but we also like, I think we stay there because we help all you know, anyways, there's stuff that we like. So um, what's that Japanese restaurant we go to? Um, off the strip there. Oh yeah, what is it called? Uh, damn it. I forget it. There's another place called Lotus of Siam, which is great, a Thai yeah. restaurant. There's, um, uh, I can't remember. wait, hot Ichiza? Ichiza, yeah. off the strip there. Yeah. And then there's Hot and Juicy. Hot and Juicy, yeah. Um, hot and Juicy is really a great place to um, bring a lot of friends or people that you're, you know, a fun thing about these trade shows is that you know, we invite our customers out, and then they might invite another brand, and then those brands might invite another, you know, company. So we end up having these, like, big dinners where mm -hmm. it's just a lot of industry people together, and, like, you know, it's just a fun hangout. You meet a lot of great people, and a, and, and a great place to do that is at Hot and Juicy. And if, mm -hmm. if you don't know what Hot and Juicy is, it's this crawfish uh, restaurant, and you don't, you order by weight, and you, they bring it to you in bags. Yeah. So like you get this big old bag of crawfish and you can order corn and all yeah. you know different lobster and different yeah. kinds of seafood. Um, and then there's just paper on yeah. the table. You just like yeah, you everybody's know, breaking open the thing yeah, and things it's, it's, with your hands yeah. and then eat it with your hands. There's no plates. Yeah, it's uh, see things. It's very fun. A great place to just you know hang out and uh, enjoy a meal together. So. Uh, yeah, I, I do. I, I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm just, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, if you're ever in Vegas, I have to say, hotel recommendation. Venetian is definitely your best bang for your buck. If you're mm -hmm. ever gonna spend that much money on a hotel room, like I don't like know, the, 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 the amount that, that you, you get. Yeah, yeah. The hotel you get for the same amount, probably like you know, three, four hundred dollars yeah. a night for Venetian yeah. versus what you get in New York yeah. is just... Yeah, you can stay at a very low-level restaurant, restaurant, hotel in New York for $300 a night. Yeah, very, very low, low level. level. It's like a motel. Yeah. Or <laughs> you can stay at the Venetian where you'll get two king-size beds, a living room, like five flat-screen TVs, like a washroom the size of your New York apartment. And like that's the standard room. Yeah. Right? Like Venetian is definitely yeah. like higher-end hotels and it's like... You know, I would have never stayed there as a, you know, like a normie. Like, yeah, or if I wasn't tra like, traveling for work. Right. Like if I just went there for like fun, I, I don't think I would have paid that much money. But then, like, if you are, it's just like it's great. Yeah. If you're all willing to pay that yeah. money, that's. One time, a friend of ours had a suite there, 
And yeah, that the, was very sad, it, actually. It, it was huge. <laughs> it was huge. It was, huge, in- incredible. It was like one guy. Yeah, it was literally one guy staying in a suite and. It just like it, it was like three bedrooms. It had a dining, dining room. Dining room. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like, what are you gonna do? You all, you go out to restaurants. You're not yeah. gonna invite guests and yeah. entertain. Pretty well, crazy. Probably some people did, but but yeah. Anyways, we will end our trip in Vegas, so it's gonna be a nice highlight for us. Right. Um, but first, we will go to New York, which I'm looking forward to going to. I want to see what's going on. Um, yeah. It's it's been, it, it's been way too yeah. long. You know, I'm, I'm we're we're, yeah, we're yeah. really much. We're very used to going to New York a lot. So um, if you're going to be in New York, we will plan something out, um, you know, some kind of hangout. The store? Yeah, at yeah. the store. So uh, watch out for that. But again, if you're going to be in New York, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, we're going to be there July. What are we looking at? Um, 18, 19, 20. 18, 19, 20. The 20th, we probably won't be there so much. 17, 18, 19, mm-hmm. those dates. We'll we, we'll plan something for around then, uh, so so watch out for that, guys. Um, okay, uh, let us know when you're in New York, please. So yeah, 17, 18, 19. We'll be there on the twentieth during the day, but we'll probably leave uh, that evening, so uh, we won't have too much time to hang out then. Um, la da 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 da. Oh, Will Stocks. Hi, Risa. Where did you get your T-shirt from? Tate Nioko. Yeah. Yeah, so, so this we, was a rock and jelly bean alien, alien. collaboration. Yeah. Um, that we carried at Tate and Yoko. Those sold out fast. Very fast. Yeah, those sold out very yeah. fast. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. First name, last name. If I put naked and famous jeans on my dog, will you show it off on Instagram? If you put naked and famous jeans on anything or anybody, we'll show it off. Yeah, so long as it's a fun photo. Uh, how do you put pants on a dog, though? Is it just the hind legs? Is it the front legs? I think I've Is it, seen... Should it be all four legs? <laughs> yes. Right? But, like, how do you hold it up? It has to be the back two legs, because otherwise you can't keep it like that, because... I don't know. I feel like the pants should go on a dog the way a human, you know, it's just it should cover all four legs and go up to their waist. But the, the waist is... Don't ask me the science. Somebody's got to figure it out. That's the proper way animals should wear pants. They're always treating them like the hind legs are the legs and that their front legs are the hands. hands. Yeah. But they're not hands. They're legs. They're four legs. They don't have hands. But they use them as hands themselves, too. Like, you know. Yeah, but their back, their back legs dig, too. I don't know. Anyways, they're, they're still legs. Okay. Um, BD, where is the poutine from in the New York Tate and Yoko video? Sorry. New Tate and Yoko. New York. See, I got New York on my brain. Where's the poutine from in the new Tate and Yoko video? Actually, I don't know. It's not It's not a video. If Oh. Side note, if, you have, if you're not following us on Instagram, uh, Naked and Famous Denim, head over there now and follow us. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did a post today um, for the upcoming Montreal Denim, Le, Le Salvage de la Belle Provence. It is going to be the Tatien Yoko, Montreal, Quebec kind of, you know, exclusive city gene um, like we have for New York with the Empire State Salvage. Um, we just put put up a little teaser photo of uh, you know the the exposed selvage ID and a little bit of that leather patch. Um, so these are likely to going to be coming out in the next very next little short while. Yeah. So um, we're going to announce that on Monday probably. Hmm. Uh, but that is the teaser. It is going to be a Montreal Tate and Yoko exclusive. You can only get them in store. Mm-hmm. They will not be available online. Online, they'll be available to, available to view. So you can see your measurement chart or something. Maybe if you have a friend going to Montreal, whatever, they can pick it up for you. You can figure out your size that way. But we, we're basically encouraging people to come to the shop, pick up that souvenir, that special edition jean that you can only get in the store. And with the Empire State Salvage, I, I saw somebody mention, sorry, if, if, I, if I, I saw the comment, I just forget who wrote it, that they went to the New York store and we were unfortunately sold out of mm-hmm. their size. Yeah, the, the, the Empire State Salvage is quite popular. Yeah. Um, it's going to be restocked for around October, so it's mm-hmm. coming. Um, 
the Vulgar Selvage Montreal edition, Le Selvage de la Belle Provence. It is, it is going to be the the Vulgar Selvage, uh, basically the Quebec, the Montreal edition with the French swear words. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize about Quebec. You know, we in Quebec speak French. Mm-hmm. But it's a different kind of French than anywhere else. You know, every everywhere that speaks French, they have their own dialect. And, and Montreal is a very particular dialect. And they have their very own swear words that are not... They, they're not used anywhere else in the French-speaking world. And it's not like yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, they, like they, they, doesn't they, make sense. they don't make a lot of sense. But uh, it's how you use them yeah. uh, what is what matters, especially with the swear words. So um, we thought it would be very funny to put... You know, we've done the Vulgar Savage you know, a few times, but now we can do it like the, the proper hometown edition of that. We've got a special, you know, alternative uh, version of the Tragic Blonde logo. She's not going to be a blonde this time. Um, but uh, it is a very fun graphic. Uh, Montreal artist um, worked on that with us for that. So more more information is coming next week. Only going to be available in store. When you come to the store, you know, you can pick up that special edition souvenir. I, I, I talked about it in the New York video when I when we released the Empire State Salvage, but there is something about picking up something from where you came, where you visited, where you when you went to, where you're where you're from anyways mm-hmm. that you can't get anywhere else right exactly right nowadays you can get anything on the internet yeah but we just wanted to make sure that it's not the case with yeah. these jeans absolutely yeah it, it is one thing okay i went to taj Yoko, picked up a pair of jeans but you might have been able to buy those online probably mm-hmm. been able to buy them online or even you know at a store locally they might have had them too so it's nice to pick that up but just making it that extra like oh you can't get these yeah like, you can only get these here you know I always like what I've always been enamored by that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also just like you know, I, I think as a as a consumer like ourselves, like it kind of like sometimes we just need that little nudge to go yeah, somewhere, you right. know, like I always feel like if somebody has a wedding or somewhere else, like, I wouldn't right. usually take a vacation there, but you're forced to go right. there. and then it's like it, and then you can admire it a lot more. Yeah, it's like, wow, I didn't even know about this. So so there you have it. Um, Okay. Uh, I, Wallen, may just have to visit New York City again after the restock. Well, it'll be a good time. You know, uh, New York in October, great time of year. It's cool, right? It's fall. I love the fall fashion in New York. Uh, Mm -hmm. I like fall fashion in general. Um, So, yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll... New York is always a ma- I'm, I'm, New York's always a magical place. Except I have to say that July though, it's a little hot. Well, like I, I like the summer in New York, yeah. but at the same time, the smell. Yeah, it does get a little stinky. The garbage on the street. Yeah, it's it's a little much. It's a little much. Um, but I'm still happy to be there. What are we gonna do in New York? What's uh, we're gonna we're gonna you know what? I, I talked to Michael from Iron Snail, so we're gonna we gotta or we're gonna plan something to, mm. to meet i've actually never met michael yeah you know we we, we chat all the time you know he, he's done a few videos for us um but uh we've never met in person so mm-hmm. i'm looking forward to meeting him mm-hmm. um I, I i reached out to nick uh stridewise nick but uh he's not gonna be in town for unfortunately but uh mm-hmm. you know we, we did get to meet up with him uh last time we were in montreal yeah. um we we went vintage shopping with him you know he mm-hmm. came he came to uh our office in montreal um, you know, did a tour and all that stuff. He, he made a video with Brandon and Garrett. Um, but like the next day, it was like his last day in, uh, in Montreal. And it was like our day, day. back in Montreal. Yeah. And, and we, we, we just happened to um, be able to meet up. We took him mm-hmm. vintage shopping. It was a, it was a great time. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know who we got to meet? Carl. Mm. Yeah, Where Carl. Where is he based in? I forget. But not New York. Mm. I got to. I got to reach out. I, every time I, I'm like, yeah, we got to come to America, go and visit him. Uh, there's a lot of people we got to visit. Sally from uh, mm. uh, uh, Fox, Fox Fiber. Fiber. Yeah. Um, Sally Fox. Uh, she's invited us to her farm. Um, we got to go and. I, I really. That's yeah. one thing I really want to do. That sounds very um, good. It's I, I want to get out to the exciting. farm and I want to learn from the grower. You mm-hmm. know, there's like we learn. We've learned so much from. You know. You know our reps at the mill and then you get from then to the mill you know the people who are actually making the fabric you go to the factory you see how it's made you talk to the machine operators you learn from them and like 
we've been to the to the yarn spinning places, mm-hmm. um, and so we're just working our way back. And yeah. uh, so, but I'm excited to meet her because clearly she's like really like you know like she has the passion she, for this. She and loves like, cotton. Yeah, yeah, it's it's incredible. I want to learn from her. She she's been doing this forever. Uh, I mean, she she breeded her own cotton. Mm-hmm. This is this is fantastic. This is incredible. So, um, Carl Morakowski, Morawski, Devin Hurt writes. Carl Morawski is in New England. Well, okay, there you go. Mm. Um, some people are asking about uh, shorts, raw denim shorts. Um, we do the alteration for that at Tate and Yoko. Um, basically, you just have to request your inseam. And we'll turn any pair of jeans into jean shorts mm-hmm. or jorts. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go anywhere from John Cena length, you know, mm-hmm. just around the knee level, and all the way up to, you know, Daisy Dukes. We'll do it. Um, yeah, it's oh, true. Yeah, I mean, or one of those uh, butt hanging ones. Is yeah, da- Daisy Dukes. No, but like shorter than that. Like like thong like- ones. <laughs> We'll, we'll, yeah, booty guy. Booty guy. We made booty, booty guy. guy. Um, Brainster, just cut your jeans. Yeah. yeah. Some people, um, you know, it's kind of like with the raw hem. Some people are just a little nervous to do things on their own, which I can understand, right? You know, um, but, you know, we do that alteration at no extra charge, and we're going to put the, uh, you know, union special finish on those jeans as well for you. So, you know, if you cut them at home, you get the raw ham, or, you know, if you have a sewing machine, you can, you know, finish it up yourself. That's fine. But if you want it, like, factory finish, mm-hmm. we can do that for you, too. No extra charge. And we, we match the color of the rest yeah. of the jeans. Yeah. Thread, so. And you can also use that alteration service on sale items, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, there might be a pair of jeans on sale for, like, less than 100 bucks mm-hmm. uh, that, you know, maybe you don't want to spend $200 on a pair of jean shorts. Got it, you know? Yeah. Uh, take advantage of the sale. Speaking of the sale, um, yesterday's email I sent it out, and for those people who tuned in last week, maybe you you, you were you, you knew about this, but I did all the um, uh, markdown changes on Tatian Yoko already. So any th- I moved a few items around. Things that were in the first markdown, the 20% off m- went into 40. Some things that were in 40% off moved into the 60% off category. And I, m- I moved a bunch of stuff into the sale section as well. So everything that is currently on sale is where it's supposed to be. You could take advantage of that right now. Um, or if you wait on until Wednesday, we're going to mark... Each one of our sales sections down just a little bit more. So the 20% off stuff becomes 30% off. The, the, the 40% off stuff becomes 50% off. And the 60% off stuff becomes 70% off. So you can wait till Wednesday. You can save a little bit more money there. But sometimes there's certain inventory. It's, there's not a lot of it left, mm-hmm. right? So uh, you, can, you can take advantage of it now. There isn't like a major rush for it at the moment. Anytime I send out like that, we've got a sale going email, like, you know, there's a big rush. So... Uh, and then, you know, it gets on the forums and things like that. People are posting it. Hey, there's a sale, Tatin Yoko or whatever. Go and, uh, you know, take advantage. Mm-hmm. So you fight with the crowds. Maybe you don't get the size you're looking for. Maybe you do. You know, you could, you could take that risk. Uh, if, you know, it's up to you. But uh, if you want to take advantage of the sale, you can do it right. Take advantage of most of the sale. You can do it right now. There will also be a few additional things, like some of the non-naked and famous stuff. Um, like the other brand stuff, we're going to mark that down 15% off. Except for like the newest arrivals. If something just came in, I'm not going to mark that down. Um, what else? Oh, there might be a few, like maybe some regular price jeans uh, that we'll mark down to like, you know, hmm. we'll, we'll, I'll figure it out. But we'll have like a section of like, these are regular price jeans, uh, you know, an assortment of them that we're going to have on a special price. Then we'll have the sales section stuff that's further marked down, and then we'll have some non-naked and famous denim stuff that's marked down as well. So a lot of deals happening there. We'll have some different stuff happening at New York. We'll announce that on, like, Wednesday, basically the day of the sale, for stuff figuring out what's going on there. Um, but, yeah, a lot of good stuff on sale. And if you want to get jean shorts and not, you know, have to pay you know full price for a pair of jeans to cut into shorts, take advantage of the sale. Uh, and mm-hmm. we'll we'll hum those for you, no problem. Um, 
Make sure you get the right size, though. Yes. Once it's hemmed, it's final sale. Yeah. Especially if it's on sale. Like if it's on yeah. sale, like if it's well, a sale it's item, double final yeah, 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 sale. double final sale. So sale <laughs> items also, sale items are considered final sale. Um, so be wary of that. You know, if you have something planned for Wednesday or beyond, you know, when we start our our, our summer sale, our America Canada Day sale. Um, yeah, take the time. Take the to time to check the measurements. measurements. Yeah. So, so you can do that now, and then you can take advantage on Wednesday. Other pro tip is that. The sale prices will probably take effect, you know, probably like 3 or 4 a.m. on Wednesday. Um, so if you're really an eagle-eyed person and you want to get ahead of the rush, do that. And then the email blast will probably go out around 9 a.m. Um, yeah. So just be aware of that. You might be able to just wiggle as long in as there. You're before the, the email blast. Because it's like you say 3 or 4 a.m. You don't want people waiting you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The price, if so. you happen to be awake, because you're <laughs> awake, and you're checking the website, and you see that it's, you know, all the... Because you'll know it because all the titles for, like, you know... Say, it, you, right now we have a, on, on Tate Yoga, it says sale, but it'll say, like, Americana the day sale, mm-hmm. and, when you, and when you hit the drop down, it'll have the new, like, markdown uh, percentages. So... Just be once that's there, it, we're live. So uh, if you're if you happen to be awake early mornings on Wednesday, just check that website. You get you bef- because or before the email wake goes up out on Wednesday, yeah. uh, especially if you're on the East Coast, like yeah. when you wake up on Wednesday, it's probably before. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, anyway, check the website. Just check the website. Uh, Venomous Teddy, is it possible to bring a pair of naked famous jeans bought from another retailer to Tate and Yoga Store to be hemmed? Um, I guess so. Yeah. If it's naked and famous, you can bring it in. No mm-hmm. problem. Uh, you know, we don't touch other jeans because, mm-hmm. look, in the, and this will include your jeans that came from another retailer, and the off chance that something happens to it, I don't like taking responsibility for that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not something I want to touch. I don't want to, you know, if you bought something somewhere else and they're expensive and the hem came out, you know, a quarter of an inch not to your liking i don't have that gene to replace it with mm-hmm. right and i'm not going to pay for your genes mm-hmm. so you know we're not we're not a uh we're not a, a dry cleaner you know there's some amount of that money that you pay that goes into some insurance fund that goes to like fixing your stuff mm-hmm. we don't do that all right mm-hmm. you know our, our we, we do complimentary hemming on genes we're not making money off of that so yeah, I don't want to take any responsibility for, um, you know, if, if, if something happens. And if it does happen and if the product that we have, look, if it's a pair of Love Cantwell weird guys in size 32, if we screw it up somehow, something happens, whatever, you're not happy with it, I got a pile of them more. I can, I could, you know, change it. Yeah. Right? A just, pile of them more. I just to add it. to that, though, like, it, it, like, if you have a naked and famous jeans that you want at home you're gonna have to bring it to the store we're not gonna take it in by mail or anything yeah, like yeah. that just everything in person yeah and then you just have to have it either brand new or washed we can't force our store to touch the yeah, jeans yeah, yeah. that you've been wearing for 40 days yeah it's, that's true yeah if, if, if you're bringing in worn jeans they have to be freshly laundered like fresh like you just took them out of the wash. Here you go. If they're disgusting, we're we are not going to take them. Like, yeah. we might, even on our end, like, I understand dirty jeans. I don't want to handle your dirty jeans. Mm-hmm. I'm perfectly fine handling my dirty jeans, but I don't want to handle your dirty jeans. You can imagine why. And I'm a raw denim guy, so I mm-hmm. get it, right? Like, our sewers and hemmers and, like, you know, our factory workers, like, they don't want to touch your dirty jeans. Yeah. They have no interest in touching your dirty jeans whatsoever. So, uh... I might have a very small like amount of like oh okay these are cool mm-hmm. I'll handle them but you yeah. know I'm not yeah. gonna we're just not gonna force yeah. people yeah, yeah, to yeah. be okay with that yeah that's it so freshly yeah. laundered mm. please um, Francisco Michael can you remind us when the Ameri Canada Day sale starts it is going to be coming up on Wednesday 29th. the 29th of June so uh, this upcoming Wednesday. Um, so there you have it. Um, Le- Leonardo Roca writes, when is the fall winter 22 preview coming out? Probably mm, closer to the end of July. 
Mm. Right? We've done a lot of previews in these live streams. So you you pretty much know all the denim that's coming out. Obviously, it's not all in one place. But mm -hmm. if you've been watching these live streams for a while, you certainly have seen everything. I've got a couple previews today to show you. Um, I've got the Katechu denim, the Hiba scratch and sniff denim. I've got the Jotaro denim from uh, the JoJo's Bazaar, uh, JoJo's Bazaar collaboration. JoJo's Bazaar Adventure collaboration uh, coming up. So uh, there's a couple things. Stay tuned. We will uh, we will get to that. Um, first name, last name. Is anything going to be restocked for the sale? Um, there's close to nothing in a 34 Easy Guy Weird Guy. Um, well, mm, I don't think there's going to be anything particularly restocked. I know that the warehouse guys are double checking some inventory. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're just doing some, you know, spot checks and things like that. Right. So it's possible that, you know, a 34 or something like that pops up. But um, there isn't yeah. going to be any major restocks. That yeah. said, there will be some of those, like, uh, you know, regular price jeans mm -hmm. that I'm going to have on special price. So there will probably be something in there for you. Um, yeah. Right. Um, uh, okay. Uh, Riley O'Brien, hello to everyone. Hello. Hope you are well. I hope you are all well too. We're well. Shout out to Bayside and Risa and Naked and Famous for a simple, efficient return. I sent back a pair and already have the correct size and a gift card for a future pair. Well, nice. there you have it. Yeah. yeah. For, for yeah. those who don't know how our return um, process works, mm -hmm. just in case you get the wrong size, uh, you know, you're, you decide that you don't like this particular pair, um, for regular price items, you have 21 days to initiate a, a, an exchange with us. Mm -hmm. And... It's not exactly an exchange like you would when you go to a retail store, right? But technically, the process is the same, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, what you do is you go online, you go to the returns. There's a little returns button uh, link at the bottom of Satin Yoko. You put in your order number, your email, and then you select the item that you want to uh, return. And then on our end, we, we look, review those every day, and you know we, we, we make an approval process. For that and um, then you have to get the jeans back to us mm -hmm. so what we do is we provide you with a discounted return label um, and you can it, it's, a, it's a couple of bucks it's a lot cheaper than if you were to ship it back yourself mm -hmm. so it's not literally a couple bucks it's like 15 for new US yeah and, and like 10 bucks or something like that I don't know how many anyway 25 for international for international Fair that's enough. outside of North America yeah so um, it's not cost prohibitive for the return price. We um, just realized that, like, if you take a jean to, especially if you're in the states. the states, and you bring your jeans to your SPS or you know FedEx or whatever to send it back to us, the rate that you're gonna get as a like regular person is like a Double. lot of money, yeah. like thirty something dollars at least. Yeah. So we can offer. We offer you basically our shipping rate. Right. So you like we buy the we're basically buying the the the, the label from UPS or yeah. FedEx or wherever for you for you and, and we provide it to you. So too. yeah, what was happening back in the day was we didn't offer that, and then we would get people returning jeans to us, and like we would see on the package it would have like a label thirty seven dollars USPS forty dollars. Like people were paying a lot of money to return those jeans back to us, and some retailers, you know, that's the requirement. You you you, you want to exchange the jean, you got to send the jean back to us, and. You know, we're in Canada. It's, it's yeah. a little bit cost prohibitive, so it makes it a little annoying. Is, yeah, another thing is also because we're in Canada, the shipping back from U.S. is the cross-border shipping, which you know is a little bit more complicated. You yeah. have to have a document filled out. We just do all of that for you. You, yeah. you all you do is just put the label, maybe sign a commercial invoice, maybe. Yeah. But like everything else is taken care of. So once we get it back we will um, give you a gift card credit. Mm -hmm. So we'll email you with a value of mm -hmm. uh, the return back to you, and then you can use that credit to buy anything else that you want. Mm -hmm. So some people think, oh, well, it's an exchange. Like, can I just change it for another pair of jeans? It doesn't quite work that way. Um, but what you do get is a credit for the amount, and then you can just uh, apply it to the, you know, the size that you want. Or, you know, you can hold on to that gift card and use it anytime you like. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that we can do um, is, you know, if, if it's like a rarer item, right, um, 
if you were to send, like, once we get, you know, what you can do is you can buy the other size. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you don't want to wait, because some, you know, you have to get the the gene. We have to receive the gene, then we issue the credit, and then you know, you once you get the credit, you can buy you know the other item that you want. You know, that could take some days, right? Mm-hmm. But if you want, you can kind of skip the line, just buy the new item, and then when we get the item back from you. Uh, we'll just refund you for that first item. Yeah, you just right. have to like let us know, email us, yeah. like that you the fact that you already bought the, the the replacement item. Yeah, yeah, and then send us the order number. We'll check and then yeah, we can handle that mm-hmm. for you. So that's one way to handle it, or you can just wait for the re- return credit. Um, yeah. So with that said, yeah. we are going to have a little bit of a change in the um, the process in the return mm-hmm. process right now like we the, if you're a Canadian customer you get like a return label right away automatically but going forward you're gonna have to wait like the rest of the you know US international customers uh, um, for us to email it to you yeah. unfortunately so that's gonna be the biggest change yeah um, so that is one thing you have to remember uh, N- n- our, when we send you the labels, it is not an automatic process. Right. Um, so, so we only do it on the weekdays, uh, business hours, yeah. and it also takes sometimes because you can't always do that instantly. Yeah. Uh, it will take maybe a day or two. I think we maximum we would send it to you within forty eight business hours. Yeah. Uh, so what happens is when you initiate that return, we send you a link to buy a return label off Tate and Yoko. Uh, and then once you make that purchase, we see it as an order, and then we will create yeah. the, the shipping label. So usually it happens, you know, you know if we can do it, if, if it happens during business hours, we can do it same day, or, you know, it just depends on the volume of how busy we are. So it's not quite like I bought the return label, and then automatically something's going to appear in your inbox. Yeah. We manually have to do all that stuff. There's no, like, automated process for that, unfortunately, uh, that yeah. we can use at this time. So... Uh, so, yeah, please yeah. bear with us. Yeah, bear with us on that one. Uh, but we do try to make it as smooth as possible. It's mm-hmm. just, we're not Amazon. Yeah. We're not Amazon. That, I have to say that sometimes, uh, I mean, I think we're not the only ones. You know, as small mm-hmm. businesses, a lot of people, it is odd that, you know, I, I don't know why, I mean, I understand it, but I'm going to put it out there. I'm just gonna put it out there. Ooh, you know, yeah, it's, it's a little time. bit, a little bit of a rant time. We need to have like yeah, yeah. a thing. Going. Yeah, we need to have like a <laughs> explosion. <laughs> rant time. So there is this idea that like you know everything needs to be instant, all the time, and it's really bizarre that you know there's I think an aspect of us like you're shopping from Tati and Yoko Naked and Famous Denim because it's this you know niche, it's this small product, it's it's independent brand and then at the same like you're not buying you know that's not to say you can't find naked famous denim products on amazon I, there are, there are products on mm-hmm. there but like you went to us at tete and yoko because we either we had it you know, there are not a lot of naked and famous denim products on amazon there are some but like it's not the whole collection or anything like that and that just depends on which retailers are posting it up there like so it, anyways but like this instant stuff that a lot of people expect from independent businesses, you know, why don't I have this right away? Why aren't you answering me? Why can't I'm like, because we don't, we're not a multi-billion dollar or trillion dollar company. We just don't have those resources. Um, So just the expectation of, you know, like you wouldn't expect the mom, pa, you know, grocery store down the street to have the same level of yeah, they're not going to deliver to your door like two hours l- after you order right. it. Right. <laughs> like, just they don't have the fleet of yeah. drivers for that. And like the reason why you're shopping from them is probably mm-hmm. because they have the special item that they don't have at the big store. Or maybe they do, but I don't know. But like well, there, there's something about you just have to understand like where who you're dealing with, right? right. And, you know, we certainly want to make things as good for you as possible. Like, we're not just resting on our laurels and saying, hey, we're a small business, so we're not going to, you know, make it easy for... Look, we're doing the most with what we can, right? Some of the software and, you know, products and things that are out there to make all those super automations happen, we can't afford them, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's the Amazon store that you walk into and you walk out of. Yeah, that's, like, that's... 
when that comes to market, that's going to be millions of dollars, right? And all the grocery stores in America are, or wherever the world are going to adopt that one day. And, like, the independent stores aren't because they can't afford it. It's just, or one day maybe it'll become affordable. It's just we're not there. So, mm-hmm. um, like, oh, an Amazon shipping warehouse is, like, robots and, you know. Yeah. And, you know. Stuff and, like, you know, in fact, the, 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 because at one point we were trying to, do some modernization in our warehouse and uh which we have but like there's certain things that i would love to do that they're just way out of scope like just the la- the the barcode reader label like laser things that like an amazon warehouse has like just one of them it, you have no idea what it costs like i was looking into it and like they're so unbelievably expensive because they're like they're the most like advanced like laser barcode scanner read they can read a barcode from like a mile away right and like they have 10 of them at like every 10 feet so that they know that each package is labeled right and going to the right place like yeah it's nice Mm -hmm. like we have barcode scanners and readers too but like it's just not the same level and we don't have robots picking and packing our orders like i i think to me like the like a lot of large retailers what they did was like they made customers feel like shipping is free or return should be free and If you think about it, there's like multiple people who are probably being paid fairly that are handling your package, you know, all through from from Montreal to your home or whatever. Like, so it's 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 very unreasonable for anybody to expect that service to be free. Mm. But at the same time, we were kind of conditioned to be like, oh, yeah, free shipping. I, yeah. You know, that's, but, that, but, that's part of it. And, you know, like, it's, it's, it's fine. And Amazon, it's not like Amazon, well, Amazon have their own, you know, distribution and stuff like that. But a large retailer who uses, like, FedEx or UPS, it's not like they don't have to pay for it. They just, they, they pay a, a lot better rate, but they still have to pay for it. It's just that, like, they take that much less margin because they can... Right, they're a they trillion dollar more. company. They can sell more yeah. to cover the cost. That you know, just like a, you know, it's it's a part of the thing where like the big gets bigger yeah. because of all these things. But it's just like you know, as an independent business, you can't really afford to give you free shipping or you know free yeah. returns. Yeah, but they also kind of they tell you it's free, but like you've signed up for Prime, so like. It's like, hey right. guys, but, but I will not, I will sell like, all of you guys a ninety dollar a year. I don't know how much Prime costs anymore, but like that seems a lot. <laughs> whatever it costs, I don't know. I'm, I'm Canadian money, but like, hey, if I just sell you a thing for eighty bucks, uh, yeah, if you got free shipping the rest of the year. Like, yeah, but you, you know, you buy from like Nordstrom or like Macy's.com yeah, or I guess whatever. That's true. Like you know, it's free shipping. Yeah. But yeah, it's just it's kind of like the expectation of consumer has changed so much because of those big guys, and it's really not fair <laughs> to small guys. Yeah, we just well, have to compete. It, it's not that it's not. I mean, it's not no, that it's, it's not, not fair. It's, not, it's just not the fair, expectation it's, that yeah. you know someone ex- like like expectation yeah. of consumers to have on everybody, including small businesses, is not fair. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This, Precisely. You don't yeah. you don't have to think about it, but you just have to be reasonable that whatever it costs, like when you are trying to purchase something from a store, you have all of the information on the website or you can contact customer service, whatever you have. You understand what you're signing up to. You cannot be mad at us for not giving you a free return label (laughs) yeah or a return label or an answer within seconds yeah yeah so yeah there's pedro cortez prime is 130 dollars i think possibly more pedro cortez writes that so there you go that's a lot that's a lot you know in japan prime is like 40 dollars a year or something (laughs) maybe it's more expensive now but eric bennett they raised prime to 140 dollars free shipping so there you go i mean it's Wow. I hope I'm not paying that much. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's free if you pay that much money a year. I mean, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it just is what it is. I just, I just find it odd when we get those kinds of complaints. 
and uh, hey, I sent you an email on Saturday morning, and you haven't responded to me. And like, you get like the angry email, and like it was like sent Sunday night, mm-hmm. and it's like, geez, man, like where do you <laughs> think you're emailing? Like, you know, you're off of you're off this weekend too, right? Like, were you answering your emails this weekend? Like, yeah, it, it's a bit well, odd. Mm-hmm. Um, Pedro Cortez, there's a video on YouTube that goes into the myth of free shipping. I think some channel posted it, maybe CNBC, don't remember. Yeah, I'm sure there's probably a lot of that out there. Um, yeah, but like as much as like we can, a lot of us understand that, you know, we, we just have these odd expectations of, uh, hey, I know it's not free, but like the, you, you will still have, you know, if you, if you don't get exactly what you want when you want it, like that, then that second right there, like, some people get a little agitated. And let me just tell you about agitation. I've definitely talked about this before. Don't come to us with agitation. It really doesn't get you anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and also never come to us with threats. Mm-hmm. Just the, 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 if you threaten us, it, like you will absolutely not, not only will I not answer you, like you will not get the service and I will not answer you, yeah. right? Um, the, like when yeah. you say threat, it's not yeah. like a, like a, you know, like, like nobody's threat of life, to be fair some like, people yeah. have threatened like physical stuff oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. it has yeah. happened um you but will not most, get answered yeah but, but most likely it's like a threat of like public shaming. public shaming <laughs> yeah it's like i'm gonna tell all my friends and i'm gonna post on social media this that yeah. and the other thing about you guys and it's like I have this many followers like, and blah, blah, blah. I, I do like, enjoy people who tell me about their followers. And I'm like, yeah, I have a hundred. How much? How, and you look and it's like, you have 2,000 followers? I'm like, yeah, we've got over 100,000 followers. And I'm, there's people with millions of followers. But I don't. But to be fair, I don't care. Like, yeah. It's not like I'm not going to act on something because you're threatening to publicly say, oh, you didn't uh, do this for me or, you know, oh, this, that, and the other thing. People do it all the time. And they th- maybe it maybe that tactic works somewhere. Doesn't work with us. Um, it's because yeah. like you know like we're, we're proud of our customer service. Yeah. We're very <laughs> flexible and yeah. understanding yeah. of customers' problems, and we bend our return policy or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like if we we find it yeah. reasonable, it's just that when you are like expecting something yeah. that is like yeah. really unreasonable. We're not gonna be like you know we're not we're not ashamed of that fact that we say no sometimes yeah. because it just doesn't make yeah. any sense. My dog ate my jeans, like literally. Like I've had those before where it's like my pet destroyed them, and I've only had them for like a year or you know what I don't even care. I've had ones where it's like even less, and it's like my pet destroyed them, and. Like, at least they're honest with that. And they're like, well, you know, uh, you, you guys should do something. And I'm like, I can try to be flexible here. Maybe I can find a way, you know, whatever. But, like, I'm not going to replace the genes that your dog destroyed. Yeah. I just, I just, I cannot, I cannot do that, right? Not be responsible yeah. for something. That your dog absolutely did. Absolutely yeah. out of our control. Yeah. It would be, that is, like, can't you help me out? Okay, well, maybe I can, you know, be sympathetic towards you. Maybe there's a, a discount I could forward you or whatever. You know, we'll see. How Like, how long have you been a customer? You know, all this stuff is going to come into play here. But, like, the idea that, you know, you're going to say, well, oh, I have a social media following and I'm going to say, I'm going to say this and that unless you do something. I don't care. <laughs> like, I literally don't care go nuts right yeah. you oh, you will only prove yourself stupid not me i like you will not prove us stupid yeah and yeah. Uh, the funny thing is like there is a point where like okay we, if we're gonna have to go back and forth like 10 times with the customer mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. certain things like it's certainly like easier for us to give you what you want but and like sometimes it does work that yeah. way but at the same time if you come to us with an attitude that yeah. is very hostile yeah we're going to go you're just not gonna get answered yeah like, we, we, you're just like we're not gonna be like yeah. okay well we don't need to deal with this yeah so and even if we have to deal with it like we we, we, yeah. we will deal yeah. with it we're yeah. not gonna yeah. just give in no threats no aggression that is you want to you want like us to be sympathetic towards a ridiculous situation just don't threaten us and don't um 
Yeah. Yeah, don't threaten us. What did I say? Don't be aggressive. Yeah, don't be aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Don't be Just hostile. Don't don't be hostile at all. Um, and and then you know if, if we can't accommodate your this is I'm only shouting out to the crazy request. If I can't accommodate your crazy request, you have to also understand that it's a crazy request, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So like I look, I understand shooting your shot. Sometimes yeah, you, you gotta shoot your you shot. You gotta ask right? for it. Sometimes. If you don't ask, yeah. you don't get. Got it. But like. You know, also understand that you're basically doing like a, you know, a, a shot from mid court at this point, right? It's like if it goes in, great. If it doesn't yeah. go in, fine, right? You just I, have to walk away. Right. Okay, yeah. I, did, like, I gave it yeah. my shot right. and walk That's away. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, Seven ninety nine asks: Is it possible to request measurements for a product on Tatanyoko? You can certainly request it, but we have them all posted, so. Uh, well, maybe sometimes, like, we're missing yeah. something, let us know. Yeah. Oh, that's true. So uh, I do get DMs every now and then for people who are like, oh, I'm, you know, maybe I found a, a, uh, an item on Amazon, or not Amazon, like eBay, or like a, you know, a, a secondary uh, you know, sale Poshmark. website. Poshmark. or whatever, you know, those, those kind of websites. Um, and, uh, you know, the seller there, they're selling them, but they don't have the measurements listed, and they you know, they don't know how to measure properly. Do you have the measurements? And I, I can actually go back and look up the measurements of those items, so I can uh, I can uh, I can provide that for you, or we can provide that for you if you send us an email or message me. Um, Chris Noel, every person with a Yelp account thinks they are a professional restaurant reviewer. <laughs> is Yelp yeah. still a yeah, thing? Yeah, Yelp a thing. Yeah. It's like, Yelp is just Yelp like, became the place where people just complain, yeah. I find. Yeah. It, it became a really unproductive place. Yeah. Because in, in the beginning, it was kind of like Google review. Like, everybody was like, oh, I want to be helpful to the you know community and the restaurants that I like. So that's why I leave reviews. Right. But then it just became... Uh, 799 writes, your seersucker women's collection doesn't have the measurements. Okay, we will oh. get them up. Okay. Um, we're gonna look into that right away. They they should be sorry up. about that. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, Yelp became like. I guess a lot of the internet has kind of become like I'm going to. Not a lot of the internet. It's a small bit of the internet of like people who want to destroy others for their own personal pleasure. I guess. Yeah. And Yelp kind of became that way. It's like if. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, like, if, I if my sandwich wasn't the greatest sandwich of all time. Yeah. And it didn't come out to me. Exactly as fast as I expected, or as, as as I may have even you know erroneously expected it to come out, I'm going to leave the worst review possible. <laughs> it, like, but but the yeah. nature of review also it's funny because you either write review because you're so impressed with something yeah. and you're just like you want everybody to support this business yeah. or whatever, or you absolutely are offended by something that they did or they mm. gave to you whatever it's just like it's a very polarizing yeah. experience yeah it's it's uh it's not always productive those reviews yeah it's you can tell like if something I, I mean most of us can tell at this point because it's like you just look at you look at the the reviews and you just you see the five star yeah, one yeah. Star. you see what the ratio is and what people are actually when when you look at the complaints you have to like look at them mm-hmm. and be like you know are these legitimate complaints or not yeah. but anyways uh, I do find it a little bit interesting that, uh, you know, uh, Chris Noel, the internet has given everyone a false sense of power. Mm. Yeah. It, it is interesting. Like, some people think that their one review is going to take down your entire business. Mm. Um, or, or like, it is odd that somebody would want to do that. Like, I've had some bad experiences before. And, like, I'm not... Yeah, but your experience yeah. is your experience. Maybe you just got unlucky. Yeah. You cannot speak for the whole business of, you know, like... Yeah, maybe. But, like, you know, if there's enough bad reviews, you know... So, right. Like, for 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 example, like, I've we've had customers who have uh, been bad customers. And they've shut down their businesses without telling anybody. Like, we've had... We've had... Unfortunately, we've had... Look, everybody goes through... They have bad clients, right? We've had clients where, like... Their business went under. They didn't take their website down. They were taking people's money, oh, not yeah. shipping them goods. You're talking about wholesale customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, we can't contact them. They're not even paying their bills. No, they, these people have ghosted people, right? And, and, like, they're still taking people's money. 
and you go into Google review and you're like, okay, everyone's review is mm -hmm. actually constructive where it's one star or zero, whatever it is. It's yeah. like, took my money, yeah. never shipped it, never contacted yeah. me, and yeah, it's like 15 or 20 of them. And then, right. okay, I can understand. Right. Like, exactly. it's the same problem, yeah. persistent. Right. And, and you can speak to your own experience. That's the yeah. whole point of the review. Yeah. But you can't just be like, this is the worst business ever because this happened to me yeah. once. And it's just like, also another thing is that a lot of the times when people re ba like leave bad reviews, they didn't even try to contact the business mm. first, yeah. which is like unfortunate because if you had a bad experience, I think you should contact the business first. If they don't do anything about right. it, then you can go and blast. And yeah, I think that's that's the that's the first thing you should. If you do, if you genuinely had a bad enough experience that you want to write a bad review, you contact the business and say, hey, I had this is my experience. You know, I I just want to give you a chance to respond before. It kind of does feel a little blackmaily before I leave you a bad review, but like, you know what? I would rather, if someone is genuinely upset about the service that they had or whatever, that they say it to me mm -hmm. and give me an opportunity to make it right, mm -hmm. right? If, yeah. if if you didn't get a good experience, maybe, you know what? Maybe it was uh, an employee's first day. Maybe it was a disgruntled employee's yeah. last day, right? You never know, <laughs> right? Sometimes you don't get the best of yeah. everybody and not everybody who's working there represents the business. You mm -hmm. might've had a bad experience and you got someone at the wrong time, whatever. And now you're speaking to someone who has the ability to make this right for you and okay. And and if they do, then, then leave that review. Say, hey, I went there. This is what happened, blah, 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 blah. I didn't have the greatest time. I reached out to them. And actually, they did something for me. And, you know, that's why I'm giving them, you know, mm -hmm. a, a better review now than I would have before. Uh, they, they, they owned up to whatever it is, and they made it right. Or they didn't own up to anything, and I'm still upset. And now this is, to yeah. me, that's a legitimate review. Right. Right. If you, if, that, that's it. There you go. That's the, that's the way. Right. Um, Brad Mac. But how real are those reviews? I mm -hmm. guess you, you can tell if. Look at the volume of reviews, you know, is it all people who have like, you know, have never reviewed before? Is it a mix of people, right? Mm -hmm. What are the, what are the people saying? Is it a bunch of the, literally the same stuff? You know, it's like eBay reviews. Sometimes like, I don't know about you, but like every time I'm on eBay, I'm just like, write the same thing. Fast seller. Great. Like, right. Like <laughs> you know. kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, but like if people are saying different things or or complimentary about the uh, similar things and they're those seem genuine mm -hmm. and i mean generally speaking like certain complaints are might be the same complaints and that would be i would imagine genuine but um uh, yeah you know how like we use mokari to buy secondhand things from seller direct mm -hmm. using this app called mokari and like in there like review system so it's like ebay so like everybody's an in individual so like you kind of have to like rely on the review to like you know especially if you're buying something you know expensive or whatever you look at the reviews but before their reviewing system is either like good or bad or like normal mm -hmm. where but they took away the normal so uh -huh. like if you oh, had a like a relatively like small minor problem you either have to rate them bad or like you just swallow uh -huh. it and say it was good. Yeah. And it's just like, it's a very, every time I have like a, a slight problem, yeah. like I just feel so bad and I end up, you know, go reviewing good. You can, you know, comment and stuff, but it's just like, I, I think it's a very extreme. You can't either be bad or good. Yeah, I think a lot of, you know, it's kind of, Maybe they took the uh, Facebook, uh, you know, uh, uh, YouTube approach by getting rid of the bat. Like, mm -hmm. it's not that YouTube got rid of the the thumbs down button. They you just don't see you it. just don't see it anymore. Yeah. So you see all the likes, but you don't see the dislikes, which I don't like because sometimes you want to see if a video, maybe a video isn't informative, right? Mm -hmm. And those dislikes might indicate that. It's like, why should I have to watch through this entire thing mm -hmm. if, you know, of course there are people who bomb videos and, like, you know, downvote stuff for whatever reasons, right? They have their reasons to do it. But I think, generally speaking, it's it's a good metric. Like, 
even on 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 Netflix, remember they got rid- they had the stars rating, and mm-hmm. then it was just like like or dislike. I'm like, you know, there's yeah. a little bit more to like and dislike, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I, I think they want to get out of that, and and mm-hmm. they also want things to appear more liked, mm-hmm. right. in, just for in general, ex- yeah, right? For example, like you are really like. It's kind of like a, a psychological tactic mm. for you to not want to ba- leave a bad review because it wasn't like all bad. It right. wasn't like, you know, I didn't get an item or whatever. Right. It just feels like it's very extreme or like you were forced to choose the good or right. the bad. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, sp- speaking of n- movies a little bit, Eric Bennett writes, by the way, I watched Bad Time at the oh, El Royale. Yeah. Uh, good recommendation. Auto correct and hit enter too soon. All right, good recommendation. I'm glad you liked it. It's a great movie. Yeah. If you haven't watched, uh, uh, if, if you haven't watched it, uh, for those of you last week, we, we recommended Bad Times at the L Royale. Try to find it. It's a, it's a great film. It's it, probably on streaming somewhere, mm-hmm. but uh, everything's on streaming somewhere. Uh, but if you can buy it, you can buy it. I think it's a, it's a, it's a worthwhile mm-hmm. movie to own. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Bring the thumbs down back, Pedro Cortez. Yeah, I, I would be okay with it. I've, I, but I don't think YouTube's in, going in that direction. I think they, they, they. Yeah, I, I've, I have no uh, faith in them bringing that back. A lot of social media has kind of just kind of, you know, one it kind of like the Apple effect when Apple does something, everybody else just kind of follows. And like mm. when, when Facebook, they got rid of like dislikes, right? Mm. I, th- I think it's all just kind of a, a trickle. Like once one of them does it, then the rest of them do it, and it's just like everyone does short videos now, and it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, then then it'll be the next thing, and it's, yeah. it's all every 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 social media is somehow trying to be the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and but I thought like was was YouTube's like and dislike um, uh, helping and curating your taste. Like recommendations, right? And stuff I wonder. Like, that. like it might, yeah. I bet you it does. Like if there are certain kinds of videos that you dislike, maybe it doesn't recommend them anymore. But maybe that's part of it because, yeah. like, if you if you feel like the dislike button is kind of useless now, maybe you don't press it anymore, right? And then your curation of content might be a little bit, you know, not as tailored to you as it might have once been. I don't know how it all works, um, but I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at the fact that the, the dislike button doesn't show that number anymore, that you, you are less inclined to press it. Except for the one guy who still presses the dislike button on every right, one of our he's videos. Back? He's still there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I he went away. Yeah, he, you, you'd think he did oh, not go away. He, but yeah, I'm, I'm presuming a he just because of I can see the demographics of our videos. Hmm. Um, you're mostly men, by the way. Um, but yeah, every video, every video, Shout out to this guy for his persistence. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> one, one. I'm not showing you the screen. I'm showing reset the screen right now. Wow. But it's literally one dislike on practically every video. Sometimes there's two, but 90% of the time it's just one, and it's definitely the same person. Oh, I don't know. I wonder. Yeah. It's got to be. The chances of that being right because if it was different people, it would be more, more dislikes. Numbers. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, shout out to you again, uh, Mr. Mr. Dislike. Um, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you being a <laughs> member of this community and persistently watching these videos. Yeah. And Well, yeah. let us know yeah. what we're doing yeah, What are we wrong? doing wrong? Yeah, let us know. Let us have a chance to respond to you. Um, so there you have it. Uh, there's a browser extension that shows the dislikes, Simos writes. Really? Yeah, but I guess you're going to have to be the kind of person who wants to see the dislikes, mm, yeah. right? I think the average person is just not yeah. going to bother with that. Yeah, you're going to have to yeah. download the extension yeah. and, yeah. Kentaro writes, have you shown off the hoodies yet? These hoodies? No, we haven't shown them off yet. That's as much as you're going to see right now. <laughs> uh, follow me on my personal uh, Instagram at Bayzad, B-A-H-Z-A-D-T. And uh, we'll, we'll probably have a few more previews soon. But, uh, yeah, if you follow me on my personal, you'll, you'll know a little bit more about mm. those. Um, okay. Uh, what's going on here? What's that nice shirt with the print that's blowing behind Risa? Nice shirt. Oh, oh it's, it's not, not, a, it's a, not shirt. a shirt. It's a blanket. It's our Boro blankets. Yeah, it's 
like I said, Chico yeah. or Print, it's a song name. Or yeah. yeah. Uh, a Furoshiki. I definitely said that wrong. Oh, Furoshiki, yeah. Furoshiki. Yeah, because you said it. Uh, right? Okay, we've got uh, some perverts in the house in the live nice. chat. We're going to nice. send you to the nether realm. Uh, Mega Plague 89. JoJo update. Just finished part one and hooked. All right. Well, we do have an update uh, for you. Well, not really an update, but uh, rather a. Uh, if you didn't see it before, you're going to see it now. Uh, because, in fact, when we go to Montreal, we'll have a little bit more. Because mm -hmm. I know that some of the fabric uh, hit the Montreal warehouse. We didn't get a, a sample of the fabric, but uh, we've got the Jotaro denim here, the all black slub, heavyweight with that beautiful gold salvage ID. I just don't want to hit the microphone. I want to show that salvage ID off. Check that out, guys. Hopefully you can see it nicely. But it is a metallic gold, heavyweight. This is Elephant 7 base. So if you missed the Elephant 7 Diablo, I know that's one of the most popular elephant mm. denims we've ever done. We're bringing it back for Jotaro. Heavyweight, big slub, elephant denim, gold and black, selvage ID. It'll have, uh, anyway, we'll, get, we'll go over the details when we, when we see them in person. So when we're in Montreal, we will do a live stream. Actually, our first day back in the office will be live stream evening. And maybe we'll have some uh, of the leather patches and stuff to show off. It'll uh, be July 15th. July 15th. So you're going to want to tune in for that. Um, so that's coming very mm. soon. Um, uh, BD, thought you were going to say send them to the nether region. No, the nether realm. We're going to send them to the nether realm, the nether region. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, Devin Hurt, those are the ones who dislike because you ban them every week. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe. I don't think so. Those are definitely bots. I don't think, are, are, they, are they bots? Let me know. For all the people who are spamming our chat, are you bots? Can we just have a chat? What's going on here? What brings you to this raw denim live stream? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you, you know there's a lot of guys in here, so you're, you're, you're doing a certain type of spam that might be, uh, you know, interesting to that... Uh, demographic not not you know but uh yeah what brings you here guys what brings you here um pedro cortez is that in the youtube studio app i would like to see how many of my videos have dislikes yeah the youtube studio app lets you see uh how much likes and dislikes you have so for the most part we have like not a high 99 point whatever it's like 99.9 99.7 you know like dislike ratio uh and it's always one um one guy one person um uh bots can probably dislike if the programmer is good enough i would say that's probably true i'm sure there are dislike bots out there um okay uh does that make me sound guilty not at all, Catman. <laughs> Not with a name like Catman. You can't be guilty. Uh, um, okay. Speaking of likes, BD is setting us up for... Hit the like button, everybody. If you haven't hit that like button yet, mm -hmm. what are you waiting for? Now is the right time. Do it. Please. Please. And thank you. Do it now. Um, and, of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, definitely. Now is not just a great time. It's the best time to do it. And any time you hit that subscribe button is the right time to do it as well. So there's no, there's no wrong time, there's only right times, and that right time could be now for you. All right. Um, okay, Rice W5, the adult ones. What's the point of them coming into the stream? Uh, I suppose it's just bots. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, our name is... Yeah. Uh... Our name is a... Naked and Famous Denim. Sometimes we get, like, um, yeah, our emails don't always hit your, you know, inbox because of the name of our company. Mm -hmm. 
I remember back in the day on uh, on social media, I couldn't even get our name. It, it, like yeah. it, 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 they just wouldn't let you because naked was in there. But mm. I, things kind of changed around over time. But uh, yeah, it's uh, you know it's just the way of the world. Um, yeah, venomous Teddy. I have a theory that the spam is due to the word naked being in the title of the stream. Mm. That's probably it. Uh, NNFDD. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Um, what if the bots are just raw denim fans as well? That's possible. You know, the AI is telling them that the internet says raw denim is the way to go. And so they're here to partake in the live stream. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to work, obviously, you know, by working, they have to do the spam, but they're here for the content, really. They're mm -hmm. just, they're here to learn about raw denim and the culture and all that stuff that's going on in the raw denim world. Um, Louis Mendoza, hi guys, been a couple of weeks. Missed y'all, we missed you too. Welcome back to the stream. Um, all right. All right. What's, um, uh, let's, what uh, else can we take a yeah, look what at? else are we going on? What else is going on? Naked and Famous Denim, we've got, we're going to the trade shows, so we're going back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We talked about uh, expectations of, uh, you know, how fast things need to operate at, uh, at the independent business level. Um, we talked about uh, likes, dislikes, and bots, and uh, how to deal with uh, bad experiences. We're going into fall, winter 22 collection. So that's going to start trickling out probably August, September. The website's going to be refreshed by end July, early August. We'll have oh, the, we'll have the uh, the overview video coming out around that time as mm -hmm. well. So you guys are going to mm -hmm. be able to see everything all at once. Um, then we're going to Spring Summer twenty three. We're going to be on the road for Spring Summer twenty three. Mm -hmm. um, we'll show off as much as we can. In fact, on that July fifteenth live stream, you're probably going to see a lot of stuff. Um, like <laughs> you'll be so excited yeah. about. I'm going to be so excited about everything because we're going to be back in the office. Yeah. So that is definitely a, a live stream that you don't want to miss uh, just a couple of weeks away. So you're going to see some Spring Summer 23 previews, um, some more JoJo stuff. So that's coming. Um, as we get, yeah, just as we get into Spring Summer 23, you'll start seeing previews of that well before we even put up Fall Winter 22. Sorry, I can't keep a secret. I'm sure you guys don't mind. Um, how come sometimes it appears gray? Like I think it's connected to oh. this question. Okay, this is a question. Hey, Hey y'all, hey all. I have a question about indigo dyeing. Okay, how come? Is, how come sometimes it appears gray, like the purple core, and sometimes it's a deep blue. Gray. Well, I don't see it as a gray. No, but like indigo is a very. There's weird. a lot of different uh, shades of yeah. indigo. It's not always like a blue, like a you know, what you would call blue if you were to. You yeah. Know, it's like not the five crayon blue. Yeah. There, I mean, when, when it comes to indigo, you do get a lot of variation in terms of like how deep that color is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it gets to like almost black level. Sometimes there's a little bit of red tone in it. Sometimes there's a little bit of green tone in it. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, there, there just happens to be a lot of variety in the way that that color comes out. Yeah. Um, and also, like, how much, you know, maybe you mentioned purple core. And it's like, like, so, if, if you're, like, you know, shaving off a, a layer of indigo, you're tr you're going to see, like, what's in the core a li little through that, like, little layers of mm -hmm. indigo that's left. So, that's so if that's, a... yeah, if that's white... Versus if it's purple, it's going to look different. Yeah. Also, the weft color can certainly yeah. affect that as well. Because the weft color, you see some of that coming through the twill lines on the front face of the fabric. And whether that's a natural color, a dark brown, a uh, white, uh, like a really stark white or anything, it just makes that indigo color visually look a little bit different. Even the, the weave of the fabric can make the color look a little bit different. I, I didn't have... I don't have it here, but I know I showed it off a few weeks ago, where we compared the left-hand twill denim to the uh, to the broken twill. We call it the offshoot broken twill. Well, basically, we're using the exact same warp and weft yarns that we used to make the left-hand twill denim, but we're doing it in a broken twill. And when you saw those two fabrics, the colors were 
kind of different. Mm-hmm. They just they just Very appeared a little bit different. Actually. Also, sometimes just the stitching color can make that the rest of the blue look visually very different mm-hmm. as well. Um, you know, I have another preview. And actually, this is a great example because you mm. can see just how different this denim looks. And all we did was change the weft. So this is uh, a denim that we, were, that we are producing for fall, winter 22 called the Katechu denim. So this is dyed with a natural dye. It, it comes from a tree bark. And when we made the first sample, the factory actually forgot to put in the proper weft color. So this is the correct warp, but the, they used a white weft. So this is what this looks like. Indigo warp, white weft. Here's what it looks like with the proper weft. This is the indigo warp with the brown weft, as you can see here. So the proper Katechu dyed brown weft. You can see just how warm toned that indigo is. And then here, sorry to cover your face like that, but you can see just how different those blues look. This blue looks a lot darker than this blue because that white is showing through so much, right? Incredible how different it can look. So it's not just the dye that affects the way the denim looks so much about how that denim is woven and the colors that are used to make the jean can make that denim look very differently. Like our, our eyes perceive color in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that answers your question and I hope that this is a good example. And speaking, anyways, we're gonna talk about this denim because I really like this denim. This is the Katechu denim coming for Fall Winter 22. Mm. Rigid, dark, and then it has that beautiful, beautiful, Katechu dyed weft. So, yeah. Very, very folly, yeah. nice, nice denim. Yeah, this is a, a, definitely a great cuff flipper. You're a boot mm-hmm. guy, you're a sneaker guy. I saw a video the other day of like, I forget who, who posted it, but it was just talking about like great brown shoes mm. for the fall. And like it was all brown sneakers, like brown cotton canvas, like Converse and Vans and things like that. Like, so. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, sometimes I think brown shoes, I'm only thinking like leather boots and things like that. I don't I don't actually think I own a, a, a pair of like brown sneakers. Um, hmm. I think. Well, I, mm, yeah, like a tan, but you don't have yeah. brown, brown. Yeah. So that would be pretty cool to match these up with. Mm. And uh, so a great cuff flipper, great to show off your sneakers with, great to pair up with in general, and uh, just, a great color for the fall. So, mm-hmm. um, Katechu denim. That's there's a lot coming out this fall that I'm excited. I mean, there's nothing I'm not excited for. There's a lot. There's a lot coming out, and it's yeah, a lot it's of good a very stuff. Strong fall. It's a everything. very powerful fall collection. Sorry for you guys out there. Um, <laughs> sorry? I'm sorry because I know it's 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 tempting, and uh, mm. you know you can't yeah. you can't have it all. Um, yeah, and we got two MIJ coming yeah. too. That's those gonna are going to be... be very tempting as well. Um, so, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I apologize. <laughs> I know it's, it, I have to. We have to figure out a way to like uh, make these denim fabrics available in like other things. Because I know that some people they just want to experience the fabric, mm. right? And uh, yeah. Like, I think that, you know, we made the ultralight in hats, and that was, I think it was a very good way to yeah. use that fabric. You know, not everything is suitable in hats, but, like, you know, maybe we should yeah. think about other uh, what, commodities. Yeah, what's another thing that someone might like in order to, like, you know, if you want to just get a piece of this, yeah. right? And, you know, you've got a couple pairs of jeans, you're not ready for another pair of jeans, you know. Yeah, like, I mean, totes is a good one. But it's yeah. How many tote bags can we make? Large. Yeah. Yeah. I anyway, know. if you guys have any ideas, let yeah. us know. I, I, you know, especially for those of you who are in that situation where it's like, hey, I'm, I'm already fading something here, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Cell phone holders for people that hate phone fades. What would a cell phone holder look like? Is it just going to be a, like a Dwight Schrute little pouch that you put on? <laughs> No, it's, it's a clip. A clip. No, but I've seen a lot of like pouches that are sized like this big. I would assume if it's like. Uh, would you would you wear that though? I I, I can see like you know when sometimes I don't have p- 
pockets in my outfit. Like, I would have to, like, what am I going to put my phone? And just maybe、mm. just want to, like, do a little. Yeah. Like an accessory thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. A it, of... It's a very feminine yeah. thing, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Like, do I, short way is very masculine way to carry yourself yeah, yeah, outside clip, of your pocket. A little clip. Phone clip. Yeah. Like a Blackberry pouch. Canada Tech represent. Can, yeah, Blackberry little. Anyways, the belt clips. I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I, I just, I'm thinking something more universal. Oh, oh it's gotta I be know a little what more you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the clip, but just、yeah. like a case that hold, like,、yeah. stuck, sticks to your belt and then you just yeah, slide、so. it in. Yeah, I guess so. I just don't、yeah. know who's gonna use that. That seems、uh, very, yeah, yeah. Uh, weird. Uh, White Lightning, aka Aqua. I got a cell holder with a clip.、Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, remember when I,、uh, back in the, I, I had a phone called a Sony Ericsson T68i. I really loved that phone. It was like my first color, it was one of the first color screen phones. It was like this big, and I had the little camera attachment for it, and it shot like the grainiest, crappiest cra- cameras. But it was one of the first phone cameras. And I got this case that had a little nubbin thing on the back, and you can clip it onto your, your waistband. And I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it has a bad rap because、yeah. it's like,、yeah. you know, a lot of like cell phone store employees yeah. wore them. Yeah. It just looked very nerdy、yeah. at that time. It was a white shirt thing. Yeah. yeah. It、uh, is kind of funny. Yeah, you get.、Uh, Access it real fast, <laughs> but I know it wasn't for me. Strang-、uh, Scranton Strangler. Scranton Strangler. <laughs> uh, denim glasses case. I'd carry glasses. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Denim、uh, tank tops. I don't know. A duffel bag or waist or waist pouch. Oh, like pouch. fanny, fanny yeah, bag. Fanny bag. Yeah. Maybe. That could be interesting.、Yeah. Quilt. That's、right. a lot of work. Quilt's a lot of work. <laughs> that's true.、Um, yeah. Uh, Ray Tattooed Boy writes, I use the denim you,、uh, you hem to wrap up my paintbrushes. Well, there you go. That's a good、That's、way a to good, use it. Yeah.、Um, speaking of paint, I'm sure you can get all that, the paint on your jeans and make a very interesting uh, you know, uh, 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 patina with all that、uh, colorful paint on your jeans.、Mm. Uh, pretty How, what cool, interesting pocket fades have you seen? For example, I know this one dude got brass knuckles fade on his back pocket. Let me tell you about brass knuckle fades on your back pocket.、Um, I think you're just trying to get brass knuckle fades on your back pocket. I wouldn't recommend you carry those either,、um, unless you want to break your fist and when you try to punch something.、Um, yeah, I don't think. I think those kind of fades are a little bit weird when people purposefully put something in their back pockets so that they can. Look like they, you know, it's like people who put the, the like,、mm, anyways, like a, yeah, 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 yeah the, 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 like the, the chewing tobacco or、yeah. whatever. Like one company, I'm not gonna say the name, kind of for some reason, and I think it's because in their country, a lot of people use that product. A lot of their faded examples had that in their back pocket, and maybe it's true that a lot of people、mm-hmm. in th- their、yeah. country use that product, yeah, but. I would often see other people just emulating that and、mm-hmm. like putting circular objects in their back pocket or、yeah. like brass knuckles in the back pocket. I don't know. Like, if you, if you carry those genuinely, then I guess, sure. Right? But I don't think most people do. And they certainly, w- you don't want to advertise that you do. I don't know. Maybe that's just me.、Um, Your, yeah. your, 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 your wallet fade is pretty genuine. If you carry, like, a, sometimes wallets, like those long wallets with, like, the button, you know, I've seen that happen where,、uh, like, the button part of it, like, busts through the back of the pocket. Or, like, some people carry, like, you know, knives and,、uh, you know, you'll have, like, a little knife fade,、uh, you know, from the clip or something on the side of your pocket. I've had,、um, from my keys, I have, like, a little key hook. And then the rest of my keys kind of sit in the back, back pocket, and like the keys have like busted through a little bit. So,、um, yeah.、Uh, if you're gonna have something interesting, I wouldn't personally recommend it being part of. I wouldn't. I would recommend that it be part of your regular lifestyle instead of trying to artificially, you know. 
put it there. I don't know. I mean, if you like it, you, like if you want to see the fate come through like that, it's. Yeah. I don't think it's such a bad idea. Like to just put something in your back pocket or in your just so that it would fade. Mm-hmm. If you want that pattern to like appear, like it's just. I I think it's a, it's a part of, you know, like. I don't know. I I mean, I I just don't think it's a such a bad thing to do. It's not like. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm that. That's where we differ. I'm not. I'm not really into that. Yeah, you might not be into that, and you know, right. I don't do that personally myself. But it's like if you like, if you want to see how like it's gonna, you know, go. If you want to just like be like, oh, I just want to. I just want to look cool by having brass knuckles in my back pocket so that they can fade. No, nah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's cool. That's not me. I like, I just, I would not recommend that. I like, if if, if you want to see something fade, just let it happen. I like, it's just weird. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't like, what else could you put in your back pocket that, or any of your pockets because you want to have a weird, of like a funny shape. Like, unless you genuinely carry it, then you're just carrying this thing around forever for like at least a year so that your 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 jeans can fade f- interest like weirdly or differently i don't know yeah it's 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 effectively making a conscious decision to tattoo your jeans by placing an unnecessary object in your pocket yeah it's un yeah. It, it, it's un- yeah. like like if you're going to do it That's unnecessarily it. then yeah. it's weird but if like that is you then i guess it's you but i i, I do i do sometimes see people doing things like that and i find it a little odd um that they would do that um uh sci i don't know how to say that syphic syphic question um what are good ways to treat new jeans to reduce crocking i just want to wear them with white sneakers without worry um okay if you want to wear them with white sneakers without worry what you want to do is sh- treat your shoes. Get some of that like uh, pre-treater spray. Spray your shoes. That way, stains come off of it a lot better, mm. right? Your jeans are gonna crock. They're gonna fade. There's not much you can do about that. Cuff the jean a little bit, right? When you're wearing a jean, example. When you're wearing a jean, this part is the indigo dyed part. That's the weft. Sorry, that's the warp. And that's rubbing against your shoes, right? Around, uh, you know, around the cuff. If you ha- if you cuff your jeans, you have a lot less of that rubbing off on your shoes. Now you get a little bit of it because you can see the blue lines here, the twill lines, that the warp lines are still coming through. You can still see it on the weft side. So that's the indigo dyed part. That still has the ability to rub on your shoes. You know, this part still has a little bit of ability to rub on your shoes. So cuff your jeans um that'll help it won't make it zero um but i think if you were to do something like this and pre-treat your shoes you will be able to maintain those shoes for a lot longer um they're gonna they're gonna get some blue on them that's that's just the nature of things um but indigo as a as a whole isn't a very um it's not a good dye in the sense that it like it, it, it comes off relatively easily and that's why your, your blue jeans fade. Um, so, so long as you're not wearing like a suede or like some kind of rough out, that kind of stuff really picks it up and mm-hmm. it's, hard to, it's hard to clean stains off of that in general. But like most sneakers are like, you know, some kind of leather or pleather or something like that. Stains come off of it pretty, pretty simply. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a melamine sponge, like a mm-hmm. like a um, Tide Magic Eraser, that stuff gets the stains off pretty easily as well. Mm-hmm. So those are some. Yeah, and do it often. Like don't wait till like a yeah. year into the stains. It's it settles. Settles. Yeah. It settles. Yeah, yeah. The the longer you wait to clean or treat your shoes, the the longer yeah. those stains settle into the into the material. Um, BD writes, I three D printed a thin elephant to keep in the coin pocket of my elephant jeans. More for fun, but not my norm at all. Well, there you go. I mean, look, different strokes That's for different really folks. Cute. Yeah, um, I was gonna say it's kind of like you know, some t- some people draw on their clothes, like yeah. you know, like a little you know whatever. 
some people s- chain stitch or yeah. you know whatever like it's kind Custom- of like a yeah. customizing your your item yes yeah. but uh, sure there's there's certainly a customization of, like you know you can customize your jeans. you can draw them you can embroider them you can you can patch them that's fu- that's cool but i think that's kind of part of it yeah but i ha- i just have to say like the 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 like the tobacco can and like the, I've seen brass knuckles, and like there's certain things that like in the raw denim world where I've just seen these kind of like odd cliches, and I, yeah, it's I not, find it's that not some people just do it. Tea, yeah, but it's also like yeah. I, I get it, you know. There's, it's just something people do. But it doesn't feel like like if you're to print three D print out something for yourself and do it because it's personal. That's a, for me. That's a little bit different than like copying. You know stuff you see somebody else do. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways to think about that. Mm. Um, uh, Twenty-seven Finbar writes: If you make a decision to wear your white trainers with raw denim, you're just going to get crocking. My view is: choose to do it, but accept the effect. It then is an honest expression of how you live. Yeah, I mean, some people ask that question simply because, you know, they're worried about their white shoes. And, like, you, you can maintain them, right? You can, you can certainly maintain them, but the expectation that, like, you're not going to get any, mm-hmm. like, that doesn't exist. You, yeah. ha- you have to accept that there is going to be some indigo transfer yeah. that's going to happen. You just have to be aware of how it happens and what you need to do in order to take care of it to be fair i have like a pair of white like um converse-esque shoes that that i wear like a lot like almost every day and because i like you know i wear my jeans a little shorter most of the the Mm. year like it really does not see any indigo get on it yeah which is pretty amazing right so yeah i mean if you just want to wear the cool shoes you just roll it up and you know you know, don't let it touch the the shoes. Right. Um, okay. Uh, the more looking forward to seeing how my dog's uh, poopy bags shows up in my back pocket fades. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. Those little uh, yeah. yeah. See, that's because that's, that's real. That'll, that'll be kind of cool. Uh, Venomous Teddy at seven nine nine. The pair I had back in the day were some gray zoo yorks. Uh, I guess they're talking about some sneakers. Uh, that, uh, that we've worn in the community here, Zoo Yorks. Um, BD, what jeans, if what jeans, if yours have passed of yours? Oh wait, what jeans of yours, of yours have you have passed, passed on and now regret having passed on? That's a good question. Like passed on to, like that I've given away. That you didn't get. Oh, that I didn't get. Oh, or I mean that you gave away maybe. Um. I have one. Okay. Uh, brown fox. Right. I really like that jeans, but you know the problem with us is that like whenever we get jeans for ourselves, mm-hmm. like I tend to want it like a core fabric so that like once I get my wear in, it still retains the value. Like I I and can, can show, show it, it off, yeah. and you know it's like it's not like something. Oh, you're not gonna be able to get it anymore. You know what I mean? Like right. it just I I want. To be wearing something that's o- mm. always like current. I yeah. Guess. Um. I wish I got the Ghostbusters chain stitch jacket. Mm. Um. We only made like eight of those, and I wasn't gonna be greedy and take one away. But we have one. We have one in the office, office but yeah. like I want one personally. Can so. I get you? Well, uh, that's business. different. Um. <laughs> But yeah, that is one thing I really I, I like all of like our embroidered jackets, um, just because I like I, I like that kind of stuff. Um, so like I have the Toxic Avenger one, I have the Batman one, I have the Joker one. Um, I, yeah, I actually didn't take any of the Ghostbusters ones. I should before they're gone. I think there's still Slimer left. Hmm. But yeah, the, the chain stitch embroidered jacket I definitely wanted that. Um, yeah, that one sold out fast. Pretty fast. Um, anything else? What else have I regretted, regretted not taking? Um, I don't think that there's anything that I particularly regretted not taking. 
other than yeah there's only yeah. so much you can wear also, right. and if you can't wear them then what's the point i guess if i had bit? unlimited space i guess i would have a lot more mm. but i just don't have unlimited space or even like way more space yeah. you, you guys don't know <laughs> we have so much yeah. stuff but but the reason why i said that that like i i i you know i i regret not getting brown fox is like because it was like you know on some fries really hairy and it was also lightweight and i'm not even sure if we're like you know we really don't do that often so it's not like it was something that we do like repeatedly like similar styles like we, we haven't seen it since or before that hopefully we'll do more some more of like lighter weight you know textured fabrics yeah but i'm not sure if we will see that again right um okay i think we're seeing a little bit of lag here and there um hopefully things are still holding up um but uh yeah it might just be lagging a little bit hopefully that re repairs itself shortly mm. um okay what do we got kentaro writes i'm with risa having something to fade having something to fade your own pattern sounds like a fun side project for your jeans i mean brass knuckles are lame but the concept seems kind of cool yeah. and aren't jeans about that yeah I, I'm not particularly like you know fond of brass knuckles or yeah. anything either, but it is it is something yeah it's just another way to to do something to your jeans that are you know that takes time and that you enjoy. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think maybe it's part of the, the thing for me is like it's the clicheness of certain things because I've seen it like done a hundred times mm -hmm. and sometimes and like for me it just seems like you're doing it because. You saw somebody else do it, and you thought it was cool, and like they probably saw somebody else do it, and they thought, it. and it's not just really pre reflective of you. Maybe one of the maybe. Well, but it's yeah. different when you see somebody do it and when you do it yourself. But why? Like my point is like, why are you doing it? Like it just seems like because you thought it was cool and that you you wanted to. But do but it like you're you're not a brass knuckle guy. Like you just so you went okay, out and I bought guess. some crappy brass knuckles Done. on Amazon and like you put them in.